This is a HeadGum Podcast. Greetings, Nadpoles. It is I, the Breakfast Wizard, here to talk to you about Magic Spoon, the sacred artifact I use to cast my serial mancy spells. After years of... Oh, what's that? Ah, oh, it turns out this is an ad for Magic Spoon the Serial, not by Spellcasting Focus. As such, I'm going to let Caldwell take over. Ta-ta! Hey gang, Caldwell here. Sorry about that. Real quick, here is what you need to know. Birthday Cake Flavor is back. That's right, this limited edition cereal was so popular that Magic Spoon brought it back, and now you can get it for yourself. For a limited time, Magic Spoon is offering a free box of birthday cake cereal with every purchase, including subscriptions. This cereal is normally $10, so this gift with purchase is a great deal. To take advantage of this offer, head to magicspoon.com slash day to grab a custom bundle of cereal and get a free box of birthday cake and try the magic for yourself. Remember, this exclusive offer is only available to NADPOD listeners. So go to magicspoon.com slash day to add a free box of birthday cake to any order. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it is backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Okay, the Breakfast Wizard is still loose in my house somewhere, so I have to go. Thanks for listening, and see you next time. Welcome to the campaign after the campaign. This is not another D&D podcast. Welcome back to Bahumia, everyone. Bahumia. I'm your Dungeon Master, Brian Murphy, joined by Jake Hurwitz. Hard one, Shorefoot. Emily Axford. Moonshine Sabin. Tree Striding. Baywatch Diving. And hopefully soon, Dragon Riding. Oh, okay. yeah! Right. Aspirational. Hey. <laughs> and then, of course, we've got Caldwell Tanner. Beverly Togold the Fifth, a purposeful lad who's the dad. Of a turtus. <laughs> a turtus? <laughs> what the hell's a turtus, man? What the it's fuck a turtus. I thought you were changing it to make it rhyme, but I'm. You, it didn't rhyme, and you made up a word. What do you mean? It's a turtus. What's wrong? <laughs> Have you ever seen a turtus on the side of the road? Truly, the most uncomfortable word. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it T U R D I S? <laughs> they got a big shill. There's a shill on your turtus. <laughs> oh god. Oh, you have an accent. Oh, we forgot that Caldwell's from Maryland. You do. You do sound like I had a teacher once who said robot, and it sounds like whoever says robot would also say turtus. Yeah, <laughs> robot. It was either listen. It was either tortoise and porpoise or turtus and purpose. So you know, you take your pick. Oh, I see. <laughs> Did you say so you went for the one with turd in it? Yeah. Okay. I'm. Still, I didn't hear purpose. I don't I'm, remember. I didn't like, hear purpose. I'm still absolutely baffled. I'm still yeah. I'm processing it. I, Should I, I do it again? Uh, could you? I, yeah. I'm I'd like you to do it again, but okay. I think I'd like you to keep don't it the same anything. because right. I am into you committing to this. All right, here we let's go, try here we go. It one more time. Ready? I love this for you. And of course, Caldwell Tanner, Beverly Togold the Fifth, a purposeful lad who's the dad of a turtus. Uh, so you, Dude. I mean, you didn't what <laughs> Turtus dad? That's what you should have said <laughs> no, to make it. No, wait. So you just because the purpose <laughs> is Turtus the new crab, sir? <laughs> I think is absolutely, the new crab absolutely, yes. No way. It wait, totally actually, is. the second I heard Jake's voice, I remembered Crabster, and that shit was funny. <laughs> hey, at least I did that shit on a short rest. Crabster is an inside joke from the short rest. This is a main uh, campaign flub, and yes. I think that's. I, I meant to say a lad of purpose. Can I say? Can I actually take there it? There you go. Now <laughs> I understand. Now I understand what you were doing. Please let me take it Good again. Good Lord, Caldwell. That makes sense. Okay, one more time, <laughs> guys. This is really the absolute last time. And Caldwell Tanner, <laughs> Beverly Togold the fifth, a lad of purpose who's the dad. Of a turtus. There you go. Okay. Now it was really it was worth the wait too. I I'm so what a privilege. What a privilege to witness that process, to just be part of that process, to watch you workshop that. You'll just cut everything before that, Murph, right? Yeah, this is going to be real clean intro. (laughs) Great. Mm -hmm. Really straight to the point. Cool. I want to keep things serious. I know that this is, we got big stuff ahead of us. (laughs) Right on. End of the campaign.
Mm-hmm. Okay, guys, let's do a little recap. So last week, you guys entered the Shrine of the Dragon God and met the Glittering Lady, an Eladrin dragon rider named Talane, who had become a gold dragon through the power of a divine heart piece. She and Melora had split a divine heart with another member of their adventuring party and formed a pact, promising to protect the realm without imposing their will on any of its creatures. Tulane eventually broke her pact, siding with the dragons in a war against giants, and when the war was lost, Tulane and many of the other dragons were banished to a strange sanctuary city in the sky. Murph, you kind of say dragons cute. Do I? You have like a little Jersey way of saying dragons. 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 How do you guys say dragons? Dragons. 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 Yes. A hard dragons. rolled R. <laughs> anyway. I say dragon. <laughs> Porpoise. Dragons, robots, and tortoises. Tortoise and dragon. <laughs> After revealing her past, Tulane sent you up to a guest room with her butler, Cordon, who quickly locked you in the room. I forgot his last name. Oh, Cordon Blue. Blue. <laughs> yeah. um, Moonshine took a gaseous form to find out what was up and learned that Tulane had imprisoned chosen Captain Barrett Brisden, as well as your old friend Luna, in some type of arcane pods. Moonshine watched as Tulane flipped a switch and extracted Brisden's essence to enchant a greatsword. After tying up Cordon and leaving him in the bathtub, uh, you all confronted the glittering lady, only to have her turn on you. She took offense to the fact that you were after her heart and clearly had resentment for Melora and her followers. She then transformed into a gold dragon and attacked, uh, but you were eventually able to use diplomacy to talk her down. Tulane eventually agreed to give you her piece of the divine heart if you could uh, get her an audience with Melora, and you agreed. You each took a piece of the heart, including Papa, and felt divine <laughs> power surge through you as you transformed into titans of Bohemia, and that's where we are now. Wow. Ooh. So you guys stand before Tulane. You all have a golden aura from the power of this divine heart. Ooh. Magic surges through your body. You see the outline of your veins shining through your skin in golden yellow as your muscles and magical abilities expand. So you, we're kind of like glittering titans now. Yeah. <laughs> um, we do have, we're covered in diamonds still. <laughs> you guys, are, you guys are still completely blanked out. Um, but you guys are struggling with your new power. Like you shudder. Some of you even fall to your knees as the shock of it hits you all at once. It's like you're learning how to walk in a new body. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Yeah, you're just like overwhelmed by all of this power. My body's been going through a lot of changes, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah hard one. This is like the biggest bulk of your life. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and I was so used to being a thin guy from uh, from my half elf days. <laughs> right. Actually, hard one. You know what? This is really mind blowing. It's like a cut and a bulk at the same time. What? Holy shit, you strive for it your whole goddamn life. <laughs> they said it wasn't possible. <laughs> Hard one just collapses uh, to all fours and begins weeping. <laughs> Uncontrollably. I, I grab Balnor and say, oh, I'm you're, you're going to fall over. Here, let me help you. And I lean on him really hard. <laughs> uh, both of you guys just topple over two <laughs> jacked halflings. Um, I, I think I stroke Pawpaw's hair like he's a, um, a drunk person at a party, like a drunk girl over a toilet at a party. Yeah. Yeah, you got this. Let it out, baby. Let it out. Just with each heave, he's just getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> That's it. You know what? You have it's, it's Pawpaw's big day. You know, That's a you got to celebrate critter. your birthday somehow. <laughs> um, so after you guys are able to kind of gather yourselves and get your bearings, you feel lighter, and everything around you seems to move a bit slower. You're just more present. You just feel yourself. You're just more powerful. Wow. Um, so this is how you always saw the world, Tulane? Uh, you see Tulane um, smiles and shakes her head and she goes, not always, not before we had the Divine Heart. And right off the bat, you guys have gained two levels and Ooh. the band of boobs go up to level 19. Woo! That's a good two, baby. For me, that's level 18 and a level one barbarian. Just... <laughs> For those of you keeping track, <laughs> <laughs> everyone's got a moonshine diary. <laughs> yeah, want to write that down? <laughs> um, so you guys feel the power of this divine heart beating 
in your chest. Bum, bum, bum. And all at once, the band of boobs are transported to the realm of Melora. Her twisted, <gasps> corrupted world looks like the painting of a storm. It's all dark and gray and black. There are tremors as the whole world shakes around you. Uh, this is exactly what Moonshine had told you guys about, but you guys are all here now. Um, Hard One, Bev, Moonshine, Papa, and Balnor. You guys see at the center of this dark world, holding it all together, is a chunk of golden yellow rock emanating with power, the rest of Melora's divine heart. The rock glows with each beat, matching the rhythm of your own heartbeat. You look down and see a yellow light pulsating in your own chest. Bum, bum, bum. It's like I've got a woodblock inside me. <laughs> you hear Melora speaking to you guys, strained as if from far away. Moonshine, she, you no longer hear the kind of pained yells that you had heard in the past, mm -hmm. but she still sounds like she's under a great deal of pain. And you hear her go, I have sacrificed my corporeal form to keep this realm together. I am merely its foundation now. You are its protectors. My heart beats in your chest, the heart of the realm. Bum. If she sacrificed her corporeal form can i get it back for her i just feel like melora you've always been known as a wanderer and how can you wander without your corporeal form everyone has a time moonshine Saban. yeah that is the natural way of things i know my heart will not only amplify your current power but unlock potential from deep within you. Beverly. Yes? I wish you could grow up in a normal world, but the gods have not blessed you with a normal life. You are afflicted with duty, things thrust upon you far beyond your years. Bev, you see a flashback of you fighting the crag, a young boy at the start of his adventures, facing a grizzled gladiator, who is swinging down on you with vicious might that causes your knees to buckle even as you block with your shield. The world should have protected you, but you have been asked to protect it. What an honor. What an injustice. You see yourself facing your father in hell. You have fought devils, fiends, and lived through it all. The Death Knight, who you once called Dad, strikes you with a staggering smite, and you collapse back. But just when it seems like you have drawn your last breath, it is they who have drawn theirs. You see the glowing book bringing you back to life, and you surge forward with an attack on your father, quick flashes of you destroying Akarat's various forms. Beverly. You come out of this flashback, and you have come into your new power. You unlock an ability previously not available to you. You may now use the action surge ability once per short rest. Oh! Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> Hell yeah. I, uh, I feel a new power dwelling within me, and it's located squarely in my glutes. <laughs> That everyone knows that is where the action urge, uh, the action surge <laughs> originates. The surge and the starts. action urge as well. <laughs> <laughs> I um, have the urge to surge. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do a deep, deep squat in reverence to Melora, uh, and I say, "This is a duty I take with honor. If I can keep those that I care about safe, if I can save this realm." then I'll do it gladly. And what I've lost will be for others to gain. Thank you. 
It was in you all along. I flex a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yes, as we all know, the surge begins in the glutes. <laughs> um, Melora addresses you all again. Hard one, Shorefoot. You are loyal to your friends and your people. There is wisdom to your simplicity. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Some would call your approach reckless. Uh, you see flashes <laughs> of you charging in with Apple and Moonshine and Bev against the Tarask, this giant armored beast. But I would call it selfless. You see Moonshine in the maw of the beast and you oh. using your hammer to open the Tarask's mouth so she can escape. You doing a predator handshake on Moonshine, yanking her out of the purple worm, scooping up Bev to get him out of harm's way of the Tarask. Still, we can never give enough of ourselves to protect the ones we love, can we? You see Beverly dropping out of your hands in front of the Tarask. But we can always give a little bit more. You see the moment of you kicking up out of unconsciousness and swinging with abandon against the Tarask as it's about to consume Balnor, cracking the monster across the jaw and felling it. Let down the walls, hard one, Shorefoot. Live recklessly. Swing your hammer. Swing until the gods are batted out of the sky. Um, hard one, you feel a shock of power enter you as you come into your own abilities. You may now use reckless attack. Woo! Fuck yeah. Can we call it selfless attack? Because selfless yeah. attack. That's awesome. I fucking love it. <laughs> Very good. Melora, you taught me how to sacrifice. My friends here did the same. The walls are down. No holds barred. Let's do this. Melora continues. Moonshine, sharing a heart should not be unfamiliar to you. You have always shared one with the Crick people. The wisdom of the Crick comes easy to you. Moonshine, you see you talking to Bev over rapport spores and the nine hells across the layers. He's faltering and thinking about joining his father. And you tell him that a child has a responsibility to his parents, but a hero has a responsibility to the world. And your words give him courage. And from there, he's able to defeat his father. But there is another side to you, Moonshine. One that you have not fully embraced. You see yourself in the Glade Home Library. <laughs> sallow skin and bags under your eyes studying a stack of books while Lucanus lectures excitedly huh, it's weird it's like everyone else looks super hot and impressive in their flashbacks and I just it, look pretty okay cool we're just okay, catching yeah. up to you <laughs> yo why is Melora teasing Moonshine I don't know you hear her echo. I think Melora just called I, me a nerd I showed Bev getting his ass kicked like three different times and I know I was yeah teasing. wow it was a real you made a whole super cut you set music to it yes you must understand I'm under a tremendous amount of pressure I can't tell no, when I people understand. are joking yeah absolutely absolutely just anyway. in the past you've always loved a playful ribbing right as is the way <laughs> Moonshine, you have always been brilliant. You do not need a crown for me to know this. Um, you flash back to you outsmarting Josh and turning his entire army against him. You see you guys aboard the SS Stormborn after Smuggler's Bounty being chased by Akarat and turning his steed into a dolphin, <laughs> outing yes. Balnor as the witch in the Autumn Court Trials. Just a a super cut of Murph Womps. Chicken, baby. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. Then, Moonshine, you see a flash of the rogue gods attacking Iron Deep, Frostwind, and Gladehome. But you, using your fungal network, are able to uh, get help everywhere. And just as things are at their darkest, um, you pull open a rift in the sky and bring an army to the material plane. You're reluctant to call yourself a leader because you put others before yourself, but you are worthy. You are not a queen in an ivory tower. You are an alpha wolf guiding her pack. Lead your people to a better future, Moonshine Sybin. Pull the fabric of time so that it flows in your favor if you have to. You have that power. Um, 
Moonshine, you feel yourself come into your power, and you may now use portent rolls. Yeah, baby! Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> That's important. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, I promise to paint this world as beautiful as I can. I'm banking on it. Melora goes on. Balnor, your presence has subtly shifted the events of this timeline in our favor. Perhaps your effects on this timeline could be a little less subtle. Um, and Balnor comes into his power. He can now use the chronal shift ability. What? Um, which will let him, uh, as a reaction, essentially he gets a luck point that he can use for other people. Oh, to do like a roll. Balnor, you and me looking into the future, huh, bud? Yeah. I <laughs> guess it's time to buddy up with Balnor. <laughs> I guess Fate I friends. I guess I am kind of a time traveler. Yeah. We're kind of a couple yeah. of time traveling guys, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Balnor, you and I need third eyes, yeah. huh? Yeah. <laughs> Hard one looks down and wanders away for this moment. <laughs> <laughs> um and Melora goes on. I shove Papa forward. Yeah. And Papa. Oh, be black. You are a good boy. Mm -hmm. A very good boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Papa comes into his power. You see uh, glowing with yellow light. Moonshine, you can now channel your spores through Papa. He can release them as an action. So if you feel like you need to save it for a counterspell or something, oh. you can have Papa do it as an action. As an action. You can wow. also store a spell a fifth level or lower in him. So he gets Whoa. one spell per day. <laughs> that possum's a fucking purse. Oh. <laughs> Oh, this is so cute. I'm immediately going to store beast sense in him so he can cast it on me and see through my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Papa looks very excited about this. So perfect. And then after a moment, uh, Moonshine, you feel a hand touch your arm mm -hmm. back in the real world. You're aware of her presence and can hear her mm -hmm. even though your consciousness is in this place. Okay. You hear Tulane. You hear her whispering. Are you, are you with her now? I, I am with her. Do you, can I bring her here or should I just? Uh, you, you feel like you have the power, like you could bring her along if you want. Okay. Tulane, I'm going to bring you in in a second, but I know that, I know that it seems like there's a lot of baggage between the two of you. So I want to make you think something positive about Melora between. Before I bring you in, okay? Oh, okay. Um, you know how during the fight, I was kind of taunting you and saying, oh, I remind you of her, huh? Yes. Well, I want you to know that I think I'm also, I think I'm also evidence of the mark that you left on her. Okay? Because there are things about you that I really do relate to. And so I think there's something of you that I receive through her. You feel her squeeze your arm like this was something she really needed to hear. You kind of, in this moment, clock Tulane as the popular girl who doesn't have any real friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so... I'm going to bring you over here, but I just wanted you to know that. And then I, I think I just take her arm, and I, instead of, like, ripping her into this world, I think I just want to, like, as if I were leading her onto the dance floor. Um, Aww. Moonshine, you hold her hand. You pull her forward. You see the glittering lady, her dress, her hair, her jewelry, sparkles the same color as your divine heart's and Melora's glowing rock in the center. She looks on in wonder at first, but then in horror, and she looks over towards Melora's divine heart, and she goes, What happened to you? You hear Melora booms back. I am protecting this place, as I always have. And Tulane goes. She's just kind of looking around dumbfounded, I didn't know that you could do this. Why? Why didn't you do this when I was in trouble? You hear Melora goes, You mistake me 
not taking your side with neutrality. I am not neutral. I defend the material plane. I would not kill for the sake of the dragons, nor will I stop the small folk from building their empires. But this, what the Allah has done, is an attack on Bohemia itself. Here, I must intervene. You see, Tulane walks up towards her and holds her hand out and touches Mulur's divine heart. Then I will stay here with you and give you my strength. We will work together to heal the world as we once did. You hear Melora boom back. It is good to have you here, old friend. And you see, um, Tulane just kind of joins her in the center there and looks to be like concentrating on a spell, kind of doing what Moonshine did before of like healing Melora and supporting her, just giving her an eternal help action. Aww. Just staying there with her. Oh. Uh, That's what friends I are for. Interrupt her? I Certainly. Don't... Um, Tulane. Uh, you see, she turns um, from the uh, from the heart. I'm I'm so sorry. Um, it's just I really liked everything you said about dragons, and I meant what I said about returning them to the sky. And I know that on the material plane, there's a dragon that I did a pretty dodgy job hacking, <laughs> catching. But I was thinking maybe with a little bit of guidance from you, I could know how to raise it on the material plane. She nods and she goes. If you speak to Cordon, he'll be able to help you. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that should be easy. Does does Cordon have like a favorite snack, or maybe like? <laughs> yeah, when you get in a fight with Cordon, how do you kiss back up to him? <laughs> Cordon doesn't get into fights with me. If he knows that it is my wish, then he would certainly help you. That should be enough. Yeah. Tell him something only I would know. Uh -huh. Long ago, when we were banished to the sanctuary, having lost our war, I told Cordon that we would fly the skies of Bohemia again someday. Okay. I will tell him that. You take care of Melora, okay? Thank you. It's been an honor. And then I guess... We slowly walk backwards out of there. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, deuces, everybody. You got I like it. bump into a painted tree. <laughs> and get oil on my my sleeve. This has been awesome. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like we overstayed our welcome shit. <laughs> they begin. Yeah, they're I know, just like hospitality is about knowing when to how to take talking, care of them, but also talking about the right old time. times. Papa and Balner just uh, sitting there listening. Papa, don't piss in here. <laughs> don't piss in <laughs> here. <laughs> no. Papa just like clearly has no to go. No pissing in this pocket dimension. <laughs> he's li he's looking at you expect expectantly, like when he needs to be taken out of the stump. <laughs> Papa, hold it just a little longer, okay? Have a little grace. Paint thinner. Don't go. Have a little grace. You know that when he does this way of sitting, that you've got like a minute tops before he starts pissing everywhere. <laughs> Report via rapport spurs, I say, y'all, we gotta go. I got a fire hydrant ready to burst. Okay, um, I, I also have to piss. Let's get out of here. Sweet. <laughs> So you guys um, all come out of um, Melora's demiplane and find yourselves back in uh, the Golden Shrine's Great Hall. Uh, and you Let's go get Luna. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. Oh, I meant to run this by her to be like, hey, just so you know, we're not stealing her. Maybe we can leave I'll a note. Leave a note. Leave a note. Yeah. Well, we'll leave a she's, note. She's yeah. she's go she's gone. She's not here anymore. So we're yeah, fine. Yeah, I know. True. I just don't want any bad blood. Well, you know what? We'll tell that to Cordon. I'm sure okay. he'll be fine with it. <laughs> cool. He's kind uh, of the warden here now. Yeah. Let's go find Luna. Sweet. Absolutely. You guys run down the hall. Moonshine leading the way. You guys go down to the arcane lab, and you see in one of the pods, Luna is in there looking super ragged. She's in her human form, but she's got yellow eyes. Her hair is all sweaty and matted, and she's just kind of clawing at the glass, yelling kind of incoherently, like she's exhausted. 
Let me out. Let me the fuck out. All right, I go into a rage and attack the glass. <laughs> uh, dope. I, I won't even make you roll. Yeah. You shatter the glass. You see Luna staggers forward like her legs are wobbly underneath her. And she just goes, fucking awesome. Um, and then just <laughs> face plants and just like passes out. Oh, You're probably gonna have to leave a note for the glass too. That's gonna be two <laughs> notes so far. You're right. Yeah, that, if you could keep track of the notes that we need someone else to write. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to dictate them. I am already writing the notes. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah, I scoop her up. I throw her over my shoulder. Sweet. Um, you scoop up uh, Luna. Um, Moonshine, you are a titan of Bohemia now, Woo! and you're also a very strong barbarian, but Luna is huge. Luna is like uh, a little over six foot tall, uh -huh. super, super beefy and strong. You do see that now, uh, or previously, she had worn like chosen armor. She was kind of a... Um, heavily armored knight and now she's more like a ranger she's got like boiled leather armor on and oh, stuff and she has a cloak but everything oh. is ragged and ever it seems like she's been in here for a long time um and you you hear her like come to and she starts just going can i get some water absolutely something to um, eat yeah uh i give sure. her some i give her some water from uh, my water skin yeah. Hard one First time, uh, uh, hard one breaks the seal on <laughs> on the the first bit of water that's been had that has not been crick water or some kind of alcohol. <laughs> Just like cracks the seal on his water skin. It's important uh, to hydrate, folks. I'm also I'm also gonna use uh, this is gonna be my last high level spell. Uh, it's I'm gonna have to do it at an eighth level, but I will cast a heal on her as well. Oh damn! Oh, I can um, touch hands or if you want me to if you want to save that slot. I think. I mean, do y'all think that we might take a little rest? I think as long as our room Probably. here isn't a prison cell anymore, I might take a little cat nap yeah, in the okay, bed. Yeah, okay, cool. We burned all the sheets, I guess, but give her a we'll full sweet. I'll, I'll say, I'll say, you guys do a little lay hands. You do your heal, and she comes back, and you see um, she looks physically stronger from the magic flowing through her. She um, grabs the water skin from Hard One and begins um, sucking down the water. Still got the price tag on it. Okay, not all of it. I, I drink. I drink that often. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you see she pulls it back and she starts panting and then she um, looks at all of you guys shocked and she goes hey oh, holy shit yeah it's been I a while gotta be honest I wasn't expecting you guys to be here can I ask you what strange path led you to this cloud <laughs> Because uh, we are in a cloud. Yeah. And we all yeah. Wow. Well, um, it has been a long. Few, how, I don't even know how long I was in there. It could have been a few days. It could have been a few weeks. What's the last thing you remember? The last thing I remember was following Barrett Brisden and a bunch of his chosen birds uh, nice. into the Golden nice. Shrine, Epic. and um, kind of sneaking up on them, trying to figure out what they were up to, them getting attacked and defeated by the glittering lady, me getting discovered before I could explain myself, and by the time I was able to calm myself down and not just tell her to fuck herself for yeah. fucking with me. You see, Again, she nice. starts to get like oh, yeah. kind of beast mode as she does that. <laughs> Tight, very um, dope. Before I could love calm it. myself love down and explain the situation. Never calm yourself down. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Stay mad. <laughs> I was, I'm actually uh, getting mad listening to this fucking story. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, bullshit. It's too. bullshit that I was put in here. Sucks. I didn't even do anything. Fucking sucks, butt. Sucks. <laughs> sucks, butt. I grab a piece of drywall from the corner so we can all yeah. just punch it. Yeah, to, to kind of keep with the um, high school comparisons, this seems like a situation where the kid, like one of the kids in the group didn't do anything but freaked out so much that they also got in trouble. <laughs> I, I didn't do anything. I respect it. I respect it. <laughs> Is that a crime? Yeah. Much less. Uh, so she goes, um, I was thrown in here, and by the time I was able to calm myself down and try to explain the situation, it just seemed like I was lying to s save my own tail. Can I find the sword that Barrett Briston was put into? Oh, yeah. Um, I was going to ask. Yeah. You guys go over to the machine. Um, you open the compartment that you saw it go into. And you find this great sword. It doesn't look like it would be a particularly good weapon. It looks more like fancy. 
It looks like an mm. ornamental weapon. Um, I still want to give it to Luna and say, uh, I found your man. Uh, yeah, you. I don't know if you. I don't know how you feel about it, but you were looking for him, and you succeeded. the The mission was a success. Here he is, delivered. Yep. Uh, you <laughs> see, she uh, grabs the sword and looks at it, and she goes, oh, "Serves him right." <laughs> what a loser! <laughs> what, a fu- what a fucking loser! Absolutely, he's loser. an object now. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you guys, fucking hum- not even that good of a sword. He's a literal tool. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, guys, he's a literal tool. Guys, he don't even fly. Do you know there's some swords that fly, Luna? It's beautiful. Um, you guys hear the Barrett Brisden sword <laughs> begin speaking. <gasps> oh, I just want to I want to talk about art. Does anybody have any art that you guys want to talk about? Do you guys want to listen to some creed or something? We could discuss it. <laughs> Creed, yeah. like the band? Creed. Some like chosen rock. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, can you take me higher? No. That yes, song? exactly. <laughs> uh, I some mean, good, I... Something with some good clean lyrics that we could discuss. <gasps> I guess I wouldn't uh, mind hearing, can you take me higher? Sure, take All it right. away. <laughs> well, no. I'm, I'm more of an enjoyer of the arts. Oh, okay, you want us to sing through. it? What's yeah. your artistic interpretation of can you take me higher? You guys, you guys get the sense <laughs> that this is a basically a charmed version of Barrett Brisden. <laughs> so she essentially was like making him into like an audience member, like somebody that she could like chat with about art. But this guy's such a loser <laughs> that like, <laughs> exactly. his tastes are still horrible. <laughs> okay. It's a Christian rock enthusiast. Yeah. <gasps> Yeah, so Luna, I think you're going to have to, to uh, re-educate this sword a bit. Maybe yeah. if you can like, play some uh, hard rock for it when you go to sleep. Ooh. You see, she just chucks it <laughs> in the corner. Fuck <laughs> yeah. See, you know what? That was yours to do. That was your decision to make. You tailed him. <laughs> what kind of a weapon you working with these days? You looking like more like a ranger. Um, you see, uh, she gestures to her teeth, uh, and yeah. she goes... Not range, just been but on the doesn't wild, need to be. Just been on the wild side <laughs> these days. Uh, she lets out a I smile. You see her canines like extend a little bit. Ooh. Dang. Dang. You know that's a magical weapon, too. <laughs> that's a magical ass smile for sure. <laughs> we passed, when I was uh, dragged in here, we passed a room that had all this awesome food in it and everything. Do you guys mind if we get a little food? I can catch you up on everything I know. Yeah. and maybe just sit down for a moment because I've been standing up in a pod for like a mm. solid solid three weeks yeah not oh, sure. to mention I pretty much took the magical equivalent of just gutting myself and let letting all my spells pour out of me so <laughs> I could use a rest I could eat I could use a trance yeah, at let's, least let's hit the buffet sweet yeah. Um, you guys go back into the great hall. You see that they were in the process of making you guys a um, feast. So wow. it is a little bit cold now. Um, but you see there's all these like trays of meats and all this um, elven grown vegetables that are like extra mm. filling, um, like I take, high elven recipes. Um, I take out a uh, I take out a spice canister of paprika and just start. Spicing everything up a bit. <laughs> yeah, we got to make this a little hotter. I think I can work with. I can work with this, y'all. I uh, pull out some yogurt and like adjust it a little bit because her palate is just too spicy for mine. But I do ooh. appreciate some spice. Okay, so we're making like a little either a yogurt side or maybe we're just turning the whole thing into a bit of a curry. Maybe so. I, yeah. I salt. I salt my tongue after I eat. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Balnor goes. Should we tell the guys on the stormboard that they can eat? Because they've probably just been. I'm gonna leave that up to Captain Hard One. <laughs> uh, oh, Skippy. Yeah, Skippy always feeds his crew first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had. First. I, I actually had some uh, some PB and Js up there in the cabin. I'm sure they took to him, but they should. Yeah, totally. They should come down here and. Uh, uh, so with you, us. you rush out, you grab Nerman and the Dwarven crew. They come in after you guys. Um, you fill them in as you walk through the secret passage and everything. Hey, Nerman, we're Titans now. Uh, there's food in here. <laughs> oh, Careful, yeah, spicy. check out our new bods. Oh, great. Oh, you guys look great. You guys look a little buffer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we flex. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, food. They, they're more excited about the food. <laughs> <laughs> they just rush in and just Deeply start picking at the buffet. Deeply disappointed my first feedback as a Titan, and it's, whoa, food. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are all sitting around this huge table eating. You see uh, Luna, like, in between bites. She's, like, eating ravenously, meat only. Um, mm-hmm. She's eating, and she goes, so after I left you, I spent some time spying on the Chosen. And eventually, I joined the Iron Deep Army to make it official. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, the fact that I can turn into a wolf was super helpful. 
So me and my pack, right, we would sneak through the Iron Deep Mountains and report back to the dwarves about the approaching uh, chosen army when they were camped out there. The dwarves would equip me with flying potions because occasionally I'd have to track one of their angels or something. A and that- flying wolf? Yeah. It's Dang. fucking bad as hell. Yes, that's very dope, awesome. Very cool. So anyway, that's how I ended up here. Brisden knew of this place through Theala. I don't know if she was able to use some kind of divine scrying thing and see past what other people could see. Anyway, he was planning on winning this divine heart for her. So I followed him and a squad of his angels through the portal, uh, then eventually to the shrine. And uh, he was taken out by the glittering lady. Uh, All of us were captured, me included, even though I didn't do anything. I was no, just there. No, you didn't. Yeah. I was oh, just, just hearing about it on the spot. freaking right. innocent. Mad I was bullshit. freaking spying. It's absolute It's crap. freaking injustice. Injustice, spying. dude. Fuck that injustice. <laughs> uh, slams her hand on the table. I pull out another piece of drywall. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love punching drywall as a titan. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, that was true. actually marble. Shoot. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, pretty much every day she would turn a different chosen angel into another item and brisden and i were last which is good news for you guys if you guys are still fighting the chosen i know we haven't spoken in a long time but no we actually joined up with the chosen yeah oh shit do i have to kill you i guess just kidding oh good man kid. we're she got you. with you <laughs> luna you got got don't fuck with me <laughs> i just wanted to bring that fire to your eyes all right anyway um if you guys are still fighting the chosen and if you plan on facing Theala, I think I might have some information for you. <gasps> While I was trapped next to Brisden, he would go on these long rants about how Theala was going to save him. And sometimes he would talk details about her plan. He said that she was going to bring her wrath on the world and release four horsemen after you. Mm-hmm. Yep, that sounds about right. So she was trapped for a while. So she goes on to explain some stuff that you guys already knew and have already experienced. Yeah, um, we, uh, we made short work of two of those horsemen. Right. Yeah, we're, we have the horsemen. <laughs> <laughs> so she goes on about the plan for the pale horse to go after you for cheating death, um, about famine trying to consume you, about pestilence trying to infect Gladeholm. Um, but then she brings up a horseman that you guys haven't had much interaction with. And she goes, he said that the last one, the wraith on the red horse would bring war to the wicked souls of the nine hells and deliver the hellfire crown to the goddess. That seems pretty tidy. Yeah. 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 Um, and he would always say that after the world was ready for her, Theala would come back and sit at the head of the court of gods. So that she would essentially rule heaven and hell. Correct. Yeah. Um, but also just the material plane, apparently yes. buried deep, under the Iron Deep Mountains, there are ruins of a place where the primordials met before gods left the earth. Uh, there was a rotating leader who sat atop a great throne. So Theala means to take the throne when she returns, naming herself God of Gods. I don't know exactly where this throne is. This hasn't been seen since the first people, but um, my my crew is better at tracking than anyone I know. So if you guys can get me a little east of Iron Deep, I think me and my pack could probably track it down while you guys deal with these horsemen. So desperate to meet your pack and maybe Mm -hmm. scratch them behind the ears if they're cool with that. But if not, I understand. I would say 90% of them would be super into that and 10% of them would definitely bite your neck. Very cool. If you can just like point out those folks. You know, it changes from day to day. So just a one in 10 chance. Just going to risk it. Going to roll those (laughs) dice. (laughs) Absolutely worth it. Slight tangent. What does your pack think about dragons? Do you think there could ever be peace between your pack and dragons? If you think about it, wolves are kind of the dragons of the earth. I have thought about it. <laughs> That's honest. If uh, I have That's... a stick and poke kit up in the Stormborn, <laughs> and that yeah. sounds like fucking perfect. That for the back sounds of like my a arm. collarbone tat to me. You guys mm-hmm. see? You guys see that Luna has really come into her own here because the yeah. last time you guys saw her, she would flash back and forth between or her eyes would turn back to uh, their non werewolf color. It would be like brown, and she would be like more soft spoken and stuff. But she's just like full on acting like leader of the pack right now, just yeah. full she's on. Alpha embraced like being like a meathead basically so alpha it's awesome i love it i um, love this for her cool uh do, y- do y'all think that we need to address the cordon blue situation precisely soon 
Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, you guys do after after you guys are like fully eating. Um, <laughs> I left. I did leave the shower on just so y'all yeah. know he's going to be very wet. When you guys we see a moment later, um, a soaking wet, <laughs> kobold sized cordone <laughs> <laughs> wrestling himself free of the ropes looked like after he woke up from mechanically being unconscious that he was able to shrink down into a kobold to get out of his binds. Um, and he rushes down soaking wet and he goes. My lady, my lady, they're attacking us. They've attacked us all. Yeah, you're too late. Oh, oh no, they're they're eating dinner early. Yeah, we were gonna write a note about that. We were gonna we had three notes to write. Yeah, we were, about, I, know, I was writing too many paragraphs. It's taking too long. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, you have a real rigid formality to all of your. Uh, <laughs> I just want the note to support the thesis. <laughs> um, Cordon, hey, over here, come sit with us. <laughs> sit with you. I, as soon as I have the energy, I'm going to turn back into my dragonborn form, and then I'm going to stab you in the face. It's okay, okay Cordon, Mr. Blue. You're spoiling your dinner, the greatest <laughs> affronts to my manners. Okay, okay. Um, Actually, maybe I- I'm going to go up to him because maybe he's going to, I feel like I should say this privately to him. Okay. Yeah. I'll be like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, you're going to, wow, well, I can't wait for you to whoop my ass. Um, And then I <laughs> go up to him and I say, hey, um, the lady's with Melora now. What, what, do you, what do you mean she's with Melora now? The lady requested an audience with Melora and Melora needs her and the lady elected to be with her. Uh, you see, he looks suspicious and he goes, Melora is no friend to this house. Okay, well, as we were leaving, she told me to tell you a memory that only the two of you would know. She told me that when y'all first got moved to the sanctuary, she promised that y'all would be riding in the skies of Bahumia again someday. Oh! You see, he immediately. <laughs> okay, so that was a vivid. Let's out for a you choking too. sob. <laughs> I don't believe you. He just like absolutely oh, believes you. Don't you. believe. Yeah. I'll say he does kind of his because he's a little bit of a paladin, so he does like a zone of truth thing because he's being a little bit indignant. Um, oh. You confirm everything that you've just said. Um, nice diameter on that zone. Uh, but I. <laughs> I want you to know I, I spoke with her before I left and I I wasn't I have a dragon back in the material plane that I'd I'd like to maybe not train but learn how to coexist with and I was wondering if maybe you could come help me. I was thinking maybe if, if the lady's busy with Melora that Bohumia could use a new dragon rider. Uh go ahead and give me a persuasion check with advantage. I only have a plus two to persuasion, but it's cool because I got an eighteen! Dirty 20. Hey. Dirty 20. Damn. Um, Day two, baby. You see Cordon is clearly very upset that the glittering lady is gone, but also moved. And he goes, do you think you would be able to get me back to the material plane? Um, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm kind of a divine titan now. So <laughs> I think that I can assert my will on this world in brand new ways. Well, if it is the glittering lady's will for me to help you, then consider me your little butler boy. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, yeah, I will, little butler boy. Yeah, that sounds great. Because I got to be honest, I mean, like, humanity, you know, yeah, I want to save humanity, but mostly I feel like I have to save humanity from itself. But the dragons? The dragons, we just need to... I think yes. that's something I could really get into. So, yes. yeah, let's do it, little butler boy. All right. Okay. Yes. Um, now come have some supper with us. <laughs> I, I look up from a giant plate of chicken and I'm like, "What well, did Moonshine get a butler? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, being a Titan rules. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait for my butler to come. <laughs> Must be a Titan Be- thing. Uh, Bev, did you get a butler? <laughs> I mean, like, I had one before, but like... <laughs> Great, so everyone's had a fucking butler but me. I thought we were kind of like shedding our earthly needs, but I guess we're doing butlers again. Let's do butlers again. I haven't I haven't really had a butler. I've been sort of I was sort of Bev's butler when I first showed up. That's right. So I've been a butler. Yeah, sure. if it's cool if it's cool with Cordon, we could kinda just all share him as a butler and also he could come up with a new title if he wanted. Although butler is kinda cute. I don't know how you feel about your profession. I much enjoy being a butler. Okay. How about, then how about would you- butler? 
So it's like oh. Butler, but you're our bud. Yeah, you're like Ooh. our friend. You don't have to do anything we ask. It's always just sort of I a hate suggestion. it, but if you want to call me Butler, that <laughs> Butler. is your choice. Butler it is. <laughs> Great. You're our Butler little Butler. Blue. <laughs> <laughs> just such a forced, shaky smile. Yes. Uh, I take some gold uh, from the wall and I shave it into a salad for him. Eat oh. up, buddy. <laughs> Ah, finally, someone with some manners just starts <laughs> ravenously eating gold. <laughs> That's our butler. You see Cordon goes, uh, you all look a little worse for the wear. If you wanted to rest here before we headed out, it might not be a bad idea. Yeah, are there any rooms without locks on the door? I could just not lock you in this time. Let's leave the door ajar, butler. Yeah, how about yeah. that? Very well. I'll stand guard at the ajar door. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a rhyme scheme I can get behind. <laughs> and I know a little bit about rhyming. <laughs> so you, guys, <laughs> you guys all eat up. Uh, you guys go back up to the room that you had previously been locked in. <laughs> uh, this time, uh, uh, Cordon does not lock the door, but rather stands at the door creepily and just like... In just like a really butlery pose with like his arm at his side, can just I, stares at I you guys. Can I just real quick say, okay, it seems like you kind of like being in a subservient position. So I'm Yes, gonna, I love it. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to do something for me. Please. Could this be your uniform? And I pull out my cowhide, cowhide vest. <laughs> you see... <laughs> Just a shaky, scared smile. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Can we take a strip off the bottom of the vest and make it into a cowhide bow tie as well? Very good nice. God. Good. <laughs> good God, thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for this gift. Shit, now I kind of want to be a butler. <laughs> I want you to be a butler, too. <laughs> I stand by the door. <laughs> Um, just as we're like winding down, um, this is something I think I've, I've been trying to do whenever I have a spare moment, uh, as I pull out Erlen's journal, um, and I kind of write little entries about what we've been doing, uh, since he was trapped in the gym, just to oh, like, cool. make Aww. sure that he's going to be up to date when he comes back. <laughs> so just, yeah, continuing his adventures from our Yeah, it's going to be so funny for him to come out and you just say, read this and we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> You Catch won't know up. me until you finish this. <laughs> Made you a recap. Love you. Aw, <laughs> oh, that's cute. Uh, yeah, you see Luna leans over while you're doing that, and she goes, he's really going to appreciate that. It sucks to be kept in a confined space for a long amount of time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It seems real bad. I'm sure he's having a shitty time in that gym. <laughs> um, and she only knows that because... Uh, I would assume you guys have like chatted. Um, oh, sure, yeah. yeah. She's not some nefarious double agent or something. Who knows? <laughs> who knows things? How'd you know about the gem? <laughs> what? <laughs> cut Butler, to attack her. Cut to a single uh, spaced Reddit post. <laughs> 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 so um, Bev does a little bit of journaling. You guys all go to bed for the night, um, and you wake up the next day. The fairy tale world that you guys are in this illusion does reflect day and night properly so there is like um you know you hear like birds chirping outside and stuff and the sun rises in the morning um and balnor and luna are with you guys and wake up and um cordon is with you guys as well um butler blue do you mind do you think that she mind if i took um a paintbrush and um a canvas if what you're saying is true and uh she blessed you with her heart, then you, in a sense, are the glittering lady. It's beautiful. Oh! oh Just lets wow. out another choking sob. Oh my god. Take a couple of big brushes. 70 degree bow. That's so impressive. His core. <laughs> <laughs> rolled my first portent rolls. Oh, nice. You rolled your first portent rolls. Yeah. Dope. <laughs> yeah, Moonshine Ooh. wakes up. You, um, as you, uh, come out of your trance uh you briefly feel like you can see into the future a little yeah, bit. yeah i think i go into the hat and i retrieve two numbers from diwana <laughs> hey diwana hey. <laughs> sorry i know it's early but i only trance for four hours so it is 4 a.m i need a couple numbers from you all right it's just okay it's super late let me go ahead i'll roll real quick wait it's super late so you've been up it's 4 a.m. It's 4 a.m.? You stay up late? What you been doing in there? There's a reason my name is Diawana. I party it's like D I'm in Tijuana. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's really bad stuff, Diawana. <laughs> Thanks. 
I'm super <laughs> drunk right now. God, I hope Moonshine cool. tells us this in the morning. <laughs> I'll just grab those numbers and you can go back to Drain great, you. Great, cool. <laughs> okay, so after I get my portent rolls, dang, I got a morning routine now. I get it's my portent to rolls and then I head down to the glittering kitchenette and I start making <laughs> a hero's feast. Uh, you start making a hero's feast. I'm making I'm making sticky buns for Bev, just like his mom oh. taught me. Um, you what? see, there's all of these. I got um, I got a brown stuff scramble going for a hard one. I jump out of bed as soon as I smell it. <laughs> it's uh, they're called hash browns, but it's just hash browns with brown stuff. You in see, them. Cordon is mm-hmm. trying to throw out the brown as he's helping you. Do not let my him do butler's that. Butler's helping me with my hero speech. Oh yeah, butler- you see, you see that there are all these. It's full on Beauty and the Beast. There's all these utensils and stuff that are coming. Uh, coming up and helping you and like flying next to you. Okay, butler, I gotta tell you, there. Sometimes I need you instead of a butler to be my sous chef. Is that an a role that you would enjoy? I enjoy doing whatever you tell me to. Okay, my lady. Weird dynamic. We'll navigate this together. <laughs> <laughs> that was so deeply. <laughs> Watch out for the frying pan. <laughs> Um, Moonshine cooks up a hero's feast. Um, you guys all gain the benefits of it. Murph, can we say that I summoned uh, Jaw Jaw the night before so I yes, don't have to certainly. burn that spell slot? Great. Yeah, Jaw oh, yeah, comes I, back. I'll summon, I'll summon Caw Caw too while we're at it. <laughs> yeah, I just do it. I just do Caw Caw's call. <laughs> oh, I've never heard that before. Could you could you share that with me? I'd love to know just for sure. uh, education. Uh, do I'll roll an animal handling check to uh, to see if I can teach Bev. Great. That's a twenty four. Wow. wow. Um, you do a great crow impression. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Just for the record, I wake up, I make the hero's feast, let it all stay hot in the oven, do another trance. Okay. As is my way. Right. Okay. Um, so you go ahead and do a zealous trance to get the slot back from hero's <laughs> feast. <laughs> It makes sense, but it's just such a funny thing to picture someone making a full breakfast at 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, taking a nap on the couch. <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> Time to sleep. Cool. Yeah, so you guys are in the shrine. You've got all the dwarves with you. you got Luna with you. Um, what do you guys do? So, Luna, we want to dispatch to try to find this primordial throne. Uh, yeah, you see um, Luna nods, and she goes, if you guys... Uh, can get me near Iron Deep. Yeah, I think can. I can find it. Yeah, we have. Yeah, can. I can. I think I know the way home. Great. Um, so I guess let's just pack up um, any of the items with the most interesting personalities and hop on the Stormborn. Right. Um, oh, before we go, should we check and see what happened to uh, that genie? Yeah. You see, uh, Cordon goes. Um, Elzebor was discovered by the glittering lady uh-huh. and sworn to her. I don't oh, know yes. if he would have stuck around. Okay, yes. so no free wish spell is what you're getting at. Correct. That, was, <laughs> that was a clever thought though, huh, babe? You, you gotta check, you gotta explore. And I was about to take this fucking frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, you look fun. Do you wanna <laughs> cook on me? Sorry, I already have a pet. <laughs> <laughs> Please love me. <laughs> Shit. All right. I the take bag. the frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> the, frying, the frying pan goes in there with the potted plant. Oh, hey, Planty. <laughs> Ew, Planty? Who named you? <laughs> we ain't named we got... ourselves. <laughs> yeah, it's Planty and, and uh, Paniel. <laughs> Paniel? <laughs> Paniel. <laughs> let's go home. Yes. Okay, so yeah, what, let's let's drop Luna off. Let's. Great. First um, order of business. I, you guys know Iron Deep is right under Gladeholm, so it's all in the same place. Great. Perfect. So you guys take off again on the SS Stormborn, leaving the Sanctuary Demiplane and crossing back onto the Material Plane. The calm skies turn to darkness as Theala's cataclysm rages. Um, You guys spend a good deal of the day into night navigating the stormy skies um, before once again coming in sight of Gladeholm and Iron Deep. However... Glade home is not as easy to see as it would be normally. You see that the arcane barrier protecting the city is not there. You see Uh-oh. rain and wind pummeling the unprotected city, Glade home banners being pulled against the wind and buildings shaking. Um, and you see, as you guys are like flying through the sky and everything, 
Luna was not here for any of this cataclysm stuff, and she just goes, holy shit. Yeah, I'm sorry we did not emotionally prepare you for this. Um, the Earth's fucked. Theala did this. Luna looks out, and she goes, uh, I can take another one of my potions and head out. My pack is very good at surviving. I'm confident that even in this, I'll be able to find them. Okay. All right, I'll... Get in touch with you. You guys will be here in Gladeholm. Is there any boon I can give you for your day? What sort? What are you facing today? I, I think just the, the elements. Here, take my hat. <laughs> the, the hat that gives you charisma? <laughs> oh, no, not that hat. <laughs> I have a How different far, hat. <laughs> is Iron Deep like five miles away or? Iron Deep is right under it. She says she needs to head like east of Iron Deep. So she just has to travel. Okay, hmm. then you don't need my help. It's difficult for me. I'm always looking for a way to help everyone. You see, she nods and she goes, that's what I like about you, Moonshine. And I like how angry you are. <laughs> it's actually really soothing. You see, she <laughs> smiles, uh, then stubs her toe. <laughs> Fuck! Fucking <laughs> ow, dude! I mean, it's poetry. You see, she salutes you guys. And a predator oh. handshake her. <laughs> mm. Pulls you in for Predator Handshake. Predator Handshake's all of you. I scratch binder ears. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank God. Then she... 10% <laughs> chance I would have freaked out. But today <laughs> feels like a head scratch day. <laughs> but you had already done that on uh, on your toe. So, yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, and you see she um, uh, sucks down a potion and jumps off the ship and begins floating east over the ruins <laughs> of the a Iron Deep Mountains. lion werewolf. Now that is a sight to behold. I love it. <laughs> so you guys see Luna disappears in the distance. Um, you guys are on the ship with Cordon and the dwarves. And um, you see Cordon is like looking out and he goes, Oh, well, I remember. Back. I remember the last time I was here, it was a lot prettier. This is, can we just, let's just go back. Um, Actually, no, Cordon, because you know what? Having it be this bad is, is well, the silver line into it is that we get to rebuild it. And you know what's really good at breaking things down that need to get broken down is mushrooms. And I spores a little bit around. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Uh, you see, again, another really forced smile shaking. Huh. I feel like the chemistry with me and Butler isn't really there. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. It takes time. <laughs> okay, thank You'll you. You'll break him down. Okay, he's, thank you. He's the fanciest boy of all time. <laughs> um, I mean, I made this fancy lad. True. Take to me, and I motioned to Bev. <laughs> I'm scratching my toes. <laughs> but yeah, you guys see, um, Glade Home seems to be exposed right now. All right, so let's. I'm gonna spin the spin the wheel and head towards Glade Home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Definitely. What the heck is going on? Hey everybody, it's Emily here to talk to you about Aura Frames. Mother's Day is coming up and some of us are looking for a way to shower the maternal figures in our life with love. Well, look no further. Aura Frames are the digital picture frames that bring all your photos and videos together in one gorgeous, high resolution display. They're super easy to set up. They save you from the struggle of printing and framing your favorite photos, but most importantly, they help you stay connected with family that live far away. That's because you can kind of preload a bunch of pictures onto the frame, but you also get to keep adding pictures and you can invite the rest of your family to add pictures. The gifts you make mean the most. So this year, turn your family's past into the perfect Mother's Day present with a connected frame from Aura. Right now, Aura has a great deal for Mother's Day. Listeners can visit AuraFrames.com slash Papa to get up to $30 off on their best-selling frames. That's A-U-R-A frames.com slash P-A-W-P-A-W. Plus, listeners can get free shipping with code P-A-W-P-A-W at checkout. This deal ends on Mother's Day, May 14th, so don't wait. Terms and conditions apply. Goodbye, sweeties. Hey there, Nadpoles. This episode is brought to you by Rocket Money. Do you know how much your subscriptions really cost, folks? Well, most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions, but the actual total is closer to around 200. Holy hell. If you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, 
then you need Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions that they forgot about, and chances are you're one of them. Like that Stars app just to watch that one show or that free gaming trial you never actually used. Well, Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you. And for any you don't want to pay for anymore, just hit cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's that easy. Rocket Money also helps you manage all your finances in one place and automatically categorizes your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks a little funky. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. Wow. So stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to Rocket rocketmoney.com slash pawpaw that is rocketmoney.com slash pawpaw one more time for you rocketmoney.com slash pawpaw thank you you guys hmm. head to glade home you get to the docks you see that there are um there are like sky docks here where like other airships are parked you see that um they've all been like tied to posts and stuff and they are moving with the wind but mostly staying intact there okay. um, but you don't really see anyone around it looks like everyone um, has kind of sheltered inside okay can I do a quick divine sense to see if this is a uh, horseman related sure yeah do a divine sense because I can control weather but I don't need to control the weather if it's just sort of a natural occurrence great uh, that's going to be a 23. Um, you don't sense any fiends or anything? Hmm. Hmm. That seemed, uh, that You do seemed... hear, you like, he, like, you see lights on in homes and stuff. Okay. And before I use and an eighth level spell, let's just go straight talk to Peepaw or Meemaw. Yeah. Yep. Sweet. Maybe Erdan, uh, forgot to raise the shield up. You know, he got tired. Mm, um, yeah. So you guys go into the city. I'm gonna say Cordon and the other dwarves uh, are going to stay back a little bit and yeah. um, fix up the ship. Mm-hmm. Doesn't need fixing. It's fine. But yeah, sure, <laughs> they can stay and just chill. <laughs> they hang back a little bit. <laughs> um, so you guys go off to Peepaw, Luke. Um, you guys arrive back near the university. You find the, l- the little addition where Tonathan's monks had set up their new research facility. Uh, despite the dark, cloudy sky, uh, it is bright here. The inside of this lab is lit up with candlelight and a fireplace. You guys enter and see a chalkboard filled with different arcane symbols and equations. In front of it is a table where scrolls and books are laid out. You see, snuggled up on a bedroll on the floor is Tonathan, <laughs> who looks like he pulled an all-nighter to finish the spell. And meanwhile, you guys see Lucanus is asleep in his chair um, uh, in front of the table, and there's, like, a, a scroll there. He's asleep sitting up? He's asleep sitting up. You know, the dad, dad comes move. out sometimes. <laughs> uh, let's see what kind of sound he makes when I wake him up, and I go tickle his belly. Oh! <laughs> you see, he, he farts, he sneezes, Was and not. he chokes all at once. Oh, my God! Did <sighs> not expect that. Moonshine, it is the end of the world. You simply cannot sneak up on me. That's really fair. In fact, I saw last time someone snuck up on you and you went into monk mode. This was very different. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, hey, what's going on? There ain't no arcane barrier around Gladeholm. Do you need our help? Uh, what's uh, with the you, weather? Is this intentional for any reason? You see, he rubs the bridge of his nose and he goes, uh, yes, um, apparently we are in danger of some kind of plague Erdan had to take precautions and cast a different type of protective spell on the city to stop um, pestilence to stop the wraith on the white horse Uh, they're here uh, apparently Erdan did some kind of research and thinks that the city might be under further danger and that it's better to cast whatever uh, I'm I'm so sorry I'm rambling I'm pretty incoherent some sort of greater restoration sort of Anyway, Can I get you some tea or something? I'm, I'm okay. Look. Okay. Tonathan and I were able to finish crafting the spell to seal away the Hellfire Crown. Um, Moonshine, I can teach it to you. Um, oh, yeah. Yes. Why don't uh, you and I, uh, we can go to my quarters and I'll teach it to you there. Actually, um, could we learn it here? This is 
such a cozy place, and it's so much more accommodating than the library, which oh, is where I did all my other wizarding. Oh, it's not the library. It's my uh, quarters. Actually, um, Is there a crackling fire there? Because I'd oh, love to learn there's some There's a crackling fire there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right. See, now this is how I embrace my wizard side. Right. Um, meanwhile, um, Beverly, uh, you may want to speak with Erdan. Of course. Um, he, I'm sure he would value your input on how to stop the spread of pestilence, you being a paladin and all. I'll go right away. And I had to. I, I go to leave, but then I write a little note for Tonathan, and I slip it next to him, and it just says, <laughs> Hey, buddy. <laughs> uh, you see he smiles and like snuggles up just kind of like senses your presence uh, you see uh, Barnaby uh, takes the note uh, from you perfect uh, I pet Barnaby uh, and then I head out actually I turn to uh, Hard One and Balnor and I say would you like to come with me or is there anything else you need to take care of you guys actually see out in the yard of the university um, you hear old Cobb call mm. out and go hey Hard One Hey, I was I was hoping to catch you guys uh, when you guys were coming back. Look, um, I know we just got a couple days till uh, till old Theala comes, and I I got something I think I think might be able to help you. Cobb, brother, yeah, I'm all ears. <laughs> uh, you see, he like waves you over to come join him. I, I sprint over there. Sweet, cool. Um, you see, Balnor uh, sees uh, Tonathan like <laughs> laying down his stuff, and he goes. It's been a long day. You guys mind if I just kind of crash here? Yeah. Uh, Lucanus already got that chair warm for you. Uh, yeah. yeah, I just saw him, and it looks like a real good dad nap, and I'm thinking about getting mm -hmm. one in myself. Uh, I go and fetch him a blanket. Sweet. And a warm bud heavy. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys see um, Balnor saddles up. Hard one heads off with Cobb. Moonshine, you go with Lucanus. And Bev, you head off to Erdan's office. Cool. So, so we'll start with um, Bev. Great. So, Bev, um, you walk through the university, loud rain outside, cracks of lightning. It's super dark in here. And you see that um, the door to Erdan's office is open. Um, he's working busily at a large oak desk, surrounded by books and ledgers. The room is lit by candles. It's dark um, because of the storm outside. Um, nearby, you see his skeleton cat is grooming itself. Um, and you see when he sees you down the hall, he waves you in and he goes, um, Yes, Beverly, um, I've discovered some new truths about the wraith on the white horse. Oh, wonderful. Um, here, would you like some of this beverage? Uh, it's coffee, but... Basically, what I do is I brew two pots of coffee, and then I pour them together, and I call it double coffee. Would you like some? Um, that sounds more normal than most of the things that you uh, try to feed me, so yes. Uh, I pour him some double coffee. Takes the double coffee, mm -hmm. um, pours it, and starts drinking. What have you learned? He sits back down at his desk, um, and you see he pulls out an old tome, and he begins flipping through it. And he goes... Okay, so apparently there are multiple components to the Wraith's Plague. It's not just a disease. It's something, it's something more subtle than that. When you and I talked about it, you described seeing the Wraith bounce from corpse to corpse when you first fought it. Corpse stride, yes. Right. <laughs> well, what if the creature didn't have to be dead for the wraith to be able to possess it? What if it merely had to be asleep or incapacitated? So you're saying that anyone that's infected could be possessed by the wraith? I, I think that's possible. And if that were the case, then someone like you could hand an infected sword to someone like me. I'd be incapacitated by the initial disease and you could cure me of it. But then, theoretically, the Wraith could still have possessed me while I was out, not controlling me at first, but lying dormant in my body until an opportune mm. moment, like when you and your friends left Glade home. Do you hear what I'm saying, Beverly? You see Erdan's face begins to sprout bubbling cysts <gasps> that pop thick, dark green goo. 
Ah. Uh. Someone like me would have access to the all caster. Someone like me would be able to cast a powerful dominate person spell on it and turn the whole city against you. I know you felt guilty about endangering your friends, Beverly, but don't worry. It is they who are endangering you. you My sword is already at his You throat. see three arrows fly through the window from an <gasps> unseen attacker. Uh. What? You see Cran and Durlin wielding no. rapiers with glazed eyes burst from a closed wardrobe uh. and stab into you. We cut to Moonshine. Fuck. 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 Um, Fuck. Guys, what the hell? You didn't do anything. Okay, well, I got to be on. I got to be truthful to how I feel. People, I, I've been wanting to tell you, when you taught me counterspell, I, I acted like it was really annoying and I didn't want to learn it. And I just keep regretting that I didn't live in that moment a little more. Uh, you see, he puts his hand on your shoulder and he goes... My daughter, I'm glad that you're embracing this side of yourself. Thank you. Know, you. Your mother and I have been talking about you a lot. Um, and you see he opens the doors to his quarters. Um, and you see Mima is in the center of the room. Mima, this is also so wonderful because I've been wanting to talk to you because I've been getting stronger. And I think I, you know, the, dru the druid change where you suddenly live super long. Oh. And I just it just feels really complicated. It's just really nice to have my mom and dad around right now. Well, it's so nice to have you around, Moonshine. Yeah. Tell me, do you know the shape change spell yet? You see, she sticks out her tongue, and it appears forked. Uh, then the rest of her body turns into a giant snake. Um, actually, I did just learn it, Mima. I could probably change into that too if I wanted. I that didn't know won't you be knew. necessary. Freeze right where you are. You see, Lucanus holds his hand up and shoots a ninth level cone of cold at you. <gasps> we cut over to a <gasps> uh, hard one. Hey, man, it's been a while since I said this, but fuck you. <laughs> oh my God! I like, literally was like. I literally was like, oh, like I can't wait to see Lucanas and Mima again. And then that shit happened with Beverly, but I was like, well, I gotta be truthful to exactly what Moonshine would have wanted to say to save them. Anyway, um, I'm excited for this old Cobb reunion. Hard one. You follow Cobb back. Uh, he's kind of shooting the shit. Um, he takes you to the house that Cobb was sharing with um, Red and Gunther and Egwene and stuff. And he takes you into the house and you see that Jaina and Mama are there oh, waiting fuck for off. you. <laughs> I, I bend the knee to Mama. <laughs> Welcome my, home, my champion. My queen, my sister, <laughs> and my best friend. What could be better? <laughs> uh, you see Old Cobb walks over, and he pulls out a long case, and he goes, I got something for you here, brother. For me? Yeah. God, you shouldn't have. Uh, but <laughs> shit, I got you. Uh, I pat my pockets. I also got you a gift. Uh, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got you a belly full of lead. You see, he opens it up, pulls out a oh. blunderbuss, and blasts you in the stomach as Look. Mama goes for your neck and uh, Jaina swings her hammer. Everybody okay. roll initiative. <laughs> Fuck this. <sighs> 19. 11. 14. Sweet. Okay. We are going to set all the surprise rounds first. So hard one. Uh, right off the bat, Old Cobb tries to pump you full of lead. Mm -hmm. uh, first thing he's going to do is a concussive shot. Uh, so he shoots at you with advantage because you're surprised. Is only a 17 to hit. Misses. It still hurts. in a, in, in a <laughs> it, it feels uh, like it hit. Yeah, you dive <laughs> out of the way like, hey, what the fuck, man? Stay still, goddammit. No. I'm old. I only got one eye, man. That is a 24 to hit on the second one. That one does. Hard one, you are hit with 33 uh, with a concussive shot. Okay. Um, and then he takes his third shot. He's going to hit on that one. That's a 26 to hit. Uh, but on that one, he only does 10 damage. Uh, next in the initiative order is our friend Cran. Um, Bev. Good old Cran. You see... Um, <laughs> Glazed uh, eyes, Cran, this little grizzled monster hunter goes up to you in full on anime style. Nothing personal. Uh, just stabs into your gut. It's extremely personal. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so absolutely personal. Um, Bev, that is a 
24 to hit. That hits. And that is 13 damage on the first rapier attack. Okay. Takes a second attack. They're rolling with advantage because it's surprise. That's why they're hitting so much. This one's a 21. Does that hit you? That's my armor class exactly. Got it. So that hits you. That is 14 damage. She takes a third attack. Wow. A 21 to hit. That hits again. That hits again. This time she does 13 damage. Then that is Hard One's turn. Hard One, you are surprised. You do not get to act or do anything. You just... Can I make a face? Yeah. (laughs) Okay, I'll make a face and it'll be kind of like this. Oh! (laughs) Keep your damn stupid face still! God damn it! Um, That is Durlin's turn. Durlin um, is going to do a little sword dance um, and shuffle forward. (laughs) Huh, bet they didn't teach you this one in green teen camp. (laughs) Ha ha! You know they didn't! (laughs) (laughs) You're damn right I know they didn't. I rolled badly. Um, He uh, trips over himself despite having advantage and misses. He gets a 14 to hit. Oh, classic Durlin! This is... I resent you. Uh, This is why I'm doing this. Um... He does 11 damage on the second attack. And on the third attack, he hits with a 25 to hit. And he does another 10 damage. Great. Next in the initiative is Mama, who goes for your throat. My champion, I'll put your larynx on my trophy case. (gasps) Your wish is my command. I move my beard aside. (laughs) Present your neck. I can't say no to you. (laughs) Is Hard One too stupid to, like, understand what's... Does he just think everyone's mad at him? (laughs) I think he... With Cobb doing it, he gets it. She does uh, manage to hit you. She does a big... She does 22 damage on the first hit as she bites into you. Uh, Second one is a... Only an 18 to hit. So that's going to miss. That Yeah, that misses. Okay. But uh, that... That's the damage that hurt most of all. Wow. Okay. Uh. Um, Then Jaina goes... Um, oh. And she swings her hammer at you. You were never good enough for my sister. That I actually agree with. You let her die. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, that's a 21 to hit. That does. And I deserve it. 22 damage to you on the first attack. 20 to hit on the next attack. That misses. Misses. Ooh, uh, takes a third attack. You. Swings, heaving the hammer. Just this unnatural bloodlust. That's going to be a 24 to hit. 18 damage on the last hit. Okay. Moonshine, that is your turn. Okay. You're surprised, uh, taken aback as you see this beam of cold energy coming towards you Do and I your s- mother as a snake snapping at you. Ugh. Um, That is, um, Egwene is up in the initiative. She um, was the one who fired the arrows. Uh, let's see if they hit Beverly. Uh, she is from a hiding position. You do not see her right now, Bev. Oh, more friends. That is a 26 to hit. Hits. And Bev, you know that she is like an alchemist type ranger and she usually does like poison tipped arrows and stuff. You yep. feel as this arrow hits you, she knew she was going to be fighting you and you feel like cold, icy cold in your veins. Like she made something special for you that wasn't poison. Um, You are hit for 10 piercing damage and 28 cold damage. Wow. Uh, Uh, I'm so proud of how strong (laughs) all of you have become. (laughs) Uh, Second attack. Ooh, shout out to the two crew and the three Cree. That's going to miss. That's going to miss. Great, great. Uh, and the third arrow. Yeah, as the first arrow hits you, uh, you jolt back. Second one is lightning fast, but you're able to move back. Um, last one is going to hit. That's a 26 to hit. And that one is going to be seven piercing damage plus 24 cold damage. Ooh. Um, That is Bev's turn. Bev... You are fucking flabbergasted. <laughs> All every green teen you've ever known except for Erlen is trying to kill you right now and it's horrifying. Then that is Lucanus's turn. Um oh. the cone of cold is going to go off hey, now. Pa, is this just supposed to be another lesson? Is this a lesson that I'm not understanding the meaning of? <laughs> Moonshine, this is because I'm disappointed in you. Oh. Uh, go ahead and make a con saving throw. I rolled two 19s. Nice. So Woo. that becomes a 23. Okay, so you're only going to take half. Okay, Ooh. Let me see. 
a ninth level cone of cold, though, still. Ugh. Whatever. I'm at least proud to have saved. Okay, so after saving, so Moonshine, he blasts you with this cone of cold. You only take 32 damage because mm-hmm. it's already halved. Okay. And then Meemaw snaps forward in snake form. i never seen you take the s- form of a snake before, Meemaw. Is that right? Well, you never did know me very well, did you? Oh, I you- didn't? Ooh. It's not for not asking. <laughs> Anything I don't know about you is because you withheld. <laughs> Uh, she snaps at you um, verbally and physically. First attack is uh, 20 to hit. Does that hit you? That does hit. That's my armor class. Okay. Best snake I've ever been bit by, Mimo. Uh You are constricted for 21, um, and you are grappled as she wraps around you, and then she's going to try to bite into you. This is so brutal. 29 to hit. <laughs> that hits. 12 damage on the bite. Second bite attack. Uh, is going to be a 30 to hit. That hits. 17 damage on that bite. And then at the end of the round... I'll take these bites as kisses, (laughs) Mimo. On initiative one, Bev, you see Erdan. uh, All of these, like, cysts are popping and everything, and he just turns into a liquid and melts away, smiling. Um, And you see the wraith disappears. Um, That is back up to Cobb's turn. (laughs) Cobb is going to take some shots at hard one. Doesn't have advantage anymore. First shot is only a 13 to hit. Boom! Misses. Echoes through the house. Hits a picture of you you two guys hanging out together. (laughs) I would say you're losing your touch, but that one seems like it was on purpose. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Next one is a 24 to hit. That hits. Okay, that is going. He's going to use his concussive shot again. Eighteen thunder damage and um, eight regular damage. All right. Um, and go ahead and give me a strength saving throw to not be knocked prone. Fuck yeah, gladly. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Nineteen. Nineteen. Um, you you're fine. You bounce back. You steal yourself. Next attack. Shout out to the three Cree misses. Yes. Um, Does that hit another picture of us? Yeah, it hits another picture of... Uh, How many framed photos of us are there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I seem to remember at one time we were really good friends, but then I think we had a falling out and we're... Uh, I love... No, we're I having the, the falling out. I love the Diala, falling out is happening right now. that makes sense? Oh. Is no. this, my good, you're getting between me and my good friend Diala and the Wraith. Rob, listen to I yourself. Love, There's... I love ghosts and wraiths and stuff. This That's just isn't me, funny, man. man. This, this isn't me. funny anymore. This is hilarious, dude. <laughs> um, that is Cran's turn. Of Cran uh, is, is just a fucking slaughter. Um, wow. Uh, uh, attacks with the rapier. They're not rolling with advantage anymore, so it's going to be harder for them to hit. Um, misses on the first attack. That's a 13. Second attack. Ooh, rolls terrible. Misses. Last attack she makes is a 22. My ass is just a little chunkier now, so it hits. Uh, she stabs into your chunky ass <laughs> for 16 it. damage. Um, okay. And then hard one, that is your turn. What do you do? You see Jaina, Mama, and Old Cobb are clearly possessed. Okay. You know, Cobb, Get over here. Oh. You killed my sister, and you are no longer my champion. Give me your body so that I can stuff it and put it in my trophy room. Yeah, man, and I don't want to hang out with you. I hate jokes. I hate keeping it light. I love the Allah. <laughs> one day, one day we're all gonna fucking laugh about this. I swear to God. Uh, and I bow to Mama as I leap out the window and run away. Oh, so are you gonna disengage? I'm gonna take a full disengage. Sweet. Um, hard one. You disengage. You leap out the window. I'm gonna say I will allow you to do a stealth check. I'll allow you to like disengage and also hide because you're leaving. Leaving the building. Um, yes. Actually, you know what? Go ahead and give me an athletics check to do it in a dope way, and then if you do, I'll <laughs> let you. I'll let you hide as sort of a free action. Uh, shoot, that's only a thirty. <laughs> Amazing. Um, hard one. You do full action movie dive through. There's like one open window. You elect to go through the one that is full glass that is completely that's closed. Right. You shatter it and jump through it. Um, go ahead and give me a stealth check as you go to hide um, outside the house so they can't find you. Okay. Also, I swan dive and it looks like I'm going to just crash my head onto uh, uh, the ground outside and then I tuck and roll at the last possible second. Willy Dumb. Wonka style. <laughs> uh, 15. 
That is Durlin's turn. Durlin Great. is going to take some swings on Bev. Ooh, shout out to the core four misses. Um, that uh, second attack is going to hit. Um, that's 18 damage, Bev, uh, with a rapier attack. Um, stabs into you. Huh, it's just like when we used to do fencing practice. <laughs> I'm scoring on you again, Beverly. <laughs> Don't uh, rub it in. Uh, that is uh, 24 to hit on the last one. A total of 14 damage. Whew. Then that is Mama's turn. Mama is going to jump out the window and start no. sniffing around to see if she can't find hard one. Oh. Uh, I'll roll a perception check. Her passive, okay, so she doesn't have any uh, special skills based on this stat block, so she's just gonna roll a plus one. She needs to get a 14 or higher to find hard one. I'm gonna roll in front of Emily here. That is a nat seven. She <laughs> fails. Uh, you see her <laughs> sniffing around and she starts going in the wrong direction. I wanna reach that out is to her. Jana's, that is Jaina's turn. Jaina starts sniffing around. Jaina <laughs> jumps out the window and starts sniffing the ground like a, another possum. I'm um, so nervous I smell like sulfur. <laughs> <laughs> Someone was cooking eggs nearby. I can't smell his natural smell. Um, <laughs> no, she wrestled with him. She knows his natural Jaina smell. Jaina has a plus six to perception, so she needs to get lower than a nine to miss oh, you. Rolling in front of Emily. She got a nine. She got a nine on the oh. dots, which gives her a 15. Um... Hard one. You see, um, Jaina stands over you with the hammer. You can't hide, you little rat. Um, swings down on you. I'm, I'm going to smack my hammer on the ground and cast shield on myself. Great. Um, she. You might want to wait to do that. She only got a 12 to hit on the first huh. attack. Oh, okay. Then yeah. I will not do that. They were The reason they were like crushing you before is because they had advantage. They don't have it anymore. Got you're it. like well okay. aware cool. that your friends are under some spell. Um, so she misses big time on the first attack, swings down into you. You're like hiding in a bush and roll out of the way. She takes a second attack. Ooh, shout out to the core four misses. Last one is a 22. Do you want a shield? She missed on two attacks. Uh, no, I'll just let her hit. Okay. Um, so then in that case, she hits you for 19 damage. Okay. Um, after Jaina, Moonshine, that is your turn. Okay. Um, so I feel like Moonshine would somewhat put together the pieces at this point, oh, yeah. right? Uh, but like, I even think that Moonshine would be like, oh, I need to get to the all caster. Because she knows, oh, the usual spell that's being cast on it mm -hmm. isn't meme on Lucanus art. Do you want? I'm, I'm like, if, do you want me to roll an Arcana? Do you want check? to roll an Insight check? Yeah. Can I do like Arcana or something? Since it's uh, uh, go ahead and roll Arcana or Insight. Okay. Hmm. Can I use Papa for a help? Yes. Because I need to make sure that Moonshine knows this. Okay, I got a twenty-four. A twenty-four. There we go. Nice. Moonshine, you totally. Now it all snaps into place. This is. Mima would never do this. You haven't known Lucanus that long. It would be insane for him to betray you in any kind of calculated way. The shield is down. Some, something ain't right in the city. Something and shitty I, in the city. Okay, so <laughs> I cast a ninth level dispel magic on Mima, and then I book it for the all caster. A ninth level dispel magic? She told me what she was doing. She was doing a spell that I know is a ninth level spell, so there you go. Ninth level spell. I will not fight you, Mima. Holy shit. If you do a ninth level dispel, dispel magic, magic it just literally works. no spell can beat that. So you see, God you damn. cast dispel magic, um, and you see- You ain't a snake. This ain't you, Mima. You see, Mima recoils um, back from you, and she goes, huh? Moonshot, what happened? What's your what's your daddy doing? You see, he's like, uh, what are you what are you doing, Jolene? After her? I'll explain it later, and then I run for the Allcaster. I'm, I'm booking it out of this room. She goes, oh, all right, I, 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 I vaguely remember what's going on. I'm sorry, Moonshine. I'm sorry, Moonshine. I'll stop this one. Um, you see, she turns into a bear and pounces on Lucanus to like tackle awesome. him. And hold him back. <laughs> okay, so he doesn't get any opportunity uh, to. Attack he does or not anything? get opportunity because he's okay. not going to take a physical attack on you. So, he yeah. is back a little bit. So then I use my movement to start going towards the Allcaster. Caster. Sweet. Um, Moonshine, you use your movement to start running down the hall um, away from Lucanus's quarters. You see um, Mima behind you turns into a bear and jumps and tackles Lucanus. And um, I'll have her do a strength check to restrain him. There's l natural 19 and she has a ton Beautiful. of strength as a bear. She just, you see her holding him down. 
Um, Moonshine, you begin running down the hall. Great turn. You see all of these, uh, as you're running down the hall, Moonshine, you see air elementals heading towards you and you hear the sounds of like almost riots in the city of the sound of like commoners running towards you. Like they've just been given the okay to go. Can I ask one more question on my turn just so I can have a good idea? I know that the all caster is like in the basement, right? Yes, yes. Um, where am I geographically? Um, I will roll a pure luck check. Uh, actually, you know what? Go ahead and roll me a pure luck check, and um, we'll determine how far Lucanus's uh, uh, quarters are from the uh, Allcaster. Twelve. A twelve. Okay. I'll say one full turn of dash. You'll be able to get that to that like great hall where you're over it. So if you want to like meld into stone or something, you can go down, but you'll need to use an action to dash. Yeah. So it might take you two turns. Okay, cool. Okay. Next in the initiative order is Egwene, who is still hiding from you, Bev. Um, Oh. Just more arrows uh, come at you. Roll the natural 19. That's a 27 to hit. Bev, she does 26 cold damage to you. Shit. Uh Um, Uh-oh. And then eight piercing damage. Fuck me. She takes very hurt. Uh, she takes a second attack. Highest one is a 16. She's still ro- rolling from um, being hidden. Last one is going to hit. Can I try and use shield on that last one? Yes. Uh, that last one um, was only 23 to hit. Great. I'm going to use shield on the last one because jaw, I jaw have 5 it. HP. Jesus wow, Christ. Fuck. Um, yep. oh. Well, Bev, that is your turn. Thank God. Okay. Um, great. I'm glad I used shield then. Uh, okay, can I do a quick insight to see if uh, if the manifestation of uh, these boils has, like, awoken some sort of fiendish presence? Um, go ahead and give me a, yeah, an insight check with advantage. That's a nat 20. <laughs> Dope. Okay. Um, awesome. Bev, based on what Erdan was saying to you, it seems like essentially what happened was the wraith slowly possessed Erdan was like dormant in him and then mm-hmm. while you guys were gone came back and took over everybody else these other people don't have the disease they are being charmed by the all caster oh. Erdan is the o- Erdan is the wraith now essentially uh. okay yeah so if I tried to use uh, turn the faithless it would not work on them probably these guys are not undead they are just your friends but charmed okay um in that case wait turn the faithless yeah. That is Fey, though. I would say that Cran and Durlin have been around long enough um, oh. in the Fey Wild that I would count them as Fey. Wow. Okay. All right. Um, that's better than nothing. So uh, there's three folks in here now. Um, yeah. I will use. I will cast Turn the Faithless. I, I hold up my my turtle symbol, and I say, "It's really great to see you all." <laughs> <laughs> And they're going to need to make a wisdom saving throw. Sweet. Okay. And I believe uh, my spell save is 20 now because it's uh, 8 plus um, proficiency plus charisma. Cran fails. Great. Um, And Derlin fails. They both rolled nat sevens. Um, (laughs) You see uh, Cran and Derlin look at each other, um, then look at Bev, and then look at each other and go, it's not worth it. He's too badass and cool. Um, And just (laughs) take off down the hall. Thanks, guys. Um, Egwene is not turned, though. Um, Um, But um, Derlin and Cran are running. You don't see where Egwene is. What are you doing? You still have movement. You still have bonus action, etc. I know that the Allcaster has been corrupted. Uh, I know that Moonshine has probably pieced this together. Uh, I need to get down there to help assist her with whatever restorative spell she's going to use. So uh, first and foremost, I will look at my amulet as a bonus action. Great. Um, and then uh, I turn to where I assume Egwene is, and I say... Smell you later, and I dive out the window. <laughs> or wait, I guess I'm in an office, aren't yeah, I? Yeah, you would you would assume that she is probably out the window. Like she's probably perched somewhere out shooting into the office. So actually going further into the castle will probably get you away from Egwene. Okay, so Smell I Smell say... you later? What are you freaking nine? <laughs> I fart as I do it. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, I'm gonna do a like reverse somersault uh out of the office door uh, Sweet. and then book it down the hallway. Okay. That's a winter And then, um, so I use my amulet as the bonus action there. Um, I used my movement. Um, I'm going to use my action surge 
And then I guess just fully dash. Sweet. Um, go ahead and roll me a luck check to see how close Erdan's office is to the Great Hall. That's an eight. An eight. Okay. Um, so you use your action surge. You do a full dash. Mm-hmm. You have run further than Moonshine, but you'll get there about the same time as her. Great. If that makes sense. Cool. Yeah. Um, so you are running down this long hall, rushing. Mm. You hear riots outside as yeah. um, swarms of people begin heading towards the university to stop you. Um, hard one, you out in the city, see like commoners and stuff just like booking it. Before my turn ends, can I send Jaja to pursue Egwene and try to restrain her? Sure. Yeah. Cool. Uh, go um, ahead and get, uh, do a perception check for uh, Jaja. Cool. That's an 18. Uh, she rolled a 19 on her, on her stealth. So he flies out the window following the trajectory of where the arrows came from. He's going after her. You get the sense that inside the university, you'll be safe from Egwene for now. Okay. That she was Keep likely sniffing, bud. shooting at you from far away. All right, cool. Dad. I love you. Is she not our friend? Is she not our friend anymore, Dad? <laughs> She's our friend. It's complicated. <laughs> I'm so confused, Dad. <laughs> Um, okay. I love you, my sweet, strong son. <laughs> I love you, Dad. Um, okay. That is Lucanus's turn. He is going to do something. You don't know what. Um, I know where he's going. But you see at the end of Lucanus's turn, um, that is now Mima's turn. Um, Moonshine, you see down the hall behind you, um, Mima barreling down the hall as a bear going, he teleported. I don't know, I know where he went, I but he teleported. I knew he did. I knew he did. Meet up with Mima. Maybe we'll try to plane ship down there. I don't All right. know. Um, she's going to take the dash action. She goes over. She scoops you up. Um, you're now riding on the back of this giant bear uh, awesome. as she charges forward down the Ooh, hall. That means that we could get over it. Yeah. Ooh. That is back up to Cobb. Hard one has been discovered. He's going to take some shots at hard one. Ooh, crits on the first hit. Ow. Uh, misses on the other two, though. That's good. Cobb shoots you for 50 damage. Ooh. Wow. And I need you to do a strength saving throw to not get knocked prone. 34. 34. Super pass. Um. You uh, mm. tighten your stomach as you're shot with an actual bullet, but you're mm. damn near a god, so you don't fall over. I, I got a, I got a new core. <laughs> um, Cobb shoots two more times, but misses. Um, that is Cran. She's running off. Uh, hard one, that's your turn. Um, all right, sweet. So I see the commoners running at me in my hiding spot. Uh, you see commoners, some running towards you, some running towards like the university. You get the sense that your friends are definitely in trouble too. Okay. Um, so, and I would know that they are they're probably going to the Allcaster, right? Um, go ahead and give me an insight check, hard one. 15. 15. You know at the very least that your friends at the university are definitely in trouble. Okay. So I'm going to just tell Cobb, Mama, and Mama, and Jaina, I'm not afraid of you guys, but we're just not doing this right now. <laughs> uh, and I'll take a full disengage again and run into uh run into the university um it's going to take you um a couple turns to get there do you want to dash or disengage um i guess i want to do whichever one's fastest dash is fastest if you action surge and keep running you'll be able to get there faster to do kind of what bev did okay i'm gonna i'll do that sweet i'll Um, I'll use my action surge if you dash though um jaina gets a uh opportunity attack just one just one. All right. Yeah. Um, I also have this new thing at level 19 that lets me gain uh, five plus my con modifier to my HP when I'm below half my points. Great. Whoa, okay. cool. Um, so she takes a swing at you as you begin dashing, and that is a 24 to hit. Um, she does 19 damage to you, hard one. Okay. Get back here, you coward. I'm not a coward. I am running, but this is, uh, I trust me, this is kind of heroic what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, hard one. You rush off, full dash, action surge, full dash again. Um, you find yourself like outside the university, kind of near where um, the addition was, where um, Balnor was sleeping. And you see 
Balnor is in an intense fight. Um, just like he's he has mounted Cooter and he's just punching him in the face. What are you <laughs> doing, man? What's gotten into you? And you see a bunch of like Glade Home guards are trying to stab into Balnor and Balnor's fighting him off. Hard one, what the hell's going on, man? Uh, Jesus, man. Either either come with me or I'm going to have to fucking come in there. <laughs> All right. Uh, Balnor will start acting out Harder One's turn. You see he um, uh, punches into Cooter, knocks him out, um, and then... That was runs. awesome, by the way. Cooter is strong as hell. Thanks, yeah. yeah. He's like level seven now, but I'm kind of a god, so whatever. <laughs> uh, but I was in the middle of a dad nap. He totally stabbed me. It sucked. <laughs> is Tonathan still asleep? Balnor is bleeding. Um, no, Tonathan um, is not there. He oh. is would also have been under the spell. Whoa. Okay, cool. Um, oh, no. Also, oh, no. Yeah. Um, that is Durland's turn. Durland's running away. That is... Um, Mama and Jaina and all those guys cannot keep up with you with action surge and everything. So those guys are all gone. Um, that is back to Moonshine's turn. Okay. Sweet. So Mima got me 40 extra feet yep. because she took a j- dash. So uh, I'm going to move whatever I need to move to then get to right over the all caster, cast stone shape. And then ideally I'd like to land on Lucanus if I can, knowing that he just <laughs> teleported in there. I can bonus action after uh, I cast plain uh, stone shape. I can bonus action, go into a rage. Munchen, to try and you, top as you, as him. you rush down the steps um, and get to the great hall over which the um, secret basement sits, mm-hmm. you see Lucanus is waiting for you in the great hall there um, and holds up his wand at you. Not one step further. I put my hands to the ground and I cast Stone Shape. Uh, he holds his wand up and he is going to cast, cast Counterspell and at an 8th level. All right, then I cast Counterspell at an 8th level myself. You use <laughs> Lucanus' own teachings against him and you see his oh. spell fizzles in his hand. People, what were you doing thinking you could... You could go after your best student. I feel <laughs> proud, but also I hate you, and I love Theala. Don't Does that worry. make sense? Does that sound like At me? At the end of this, honestly, you're probably going to hate yourself a lot, and I'll help you work through that. And uh, then I stone stone shape the ground and disappear. You would stone shape you and Mima. Um, make like a little stone. Make slide. a stone slide and slide through the floor. That is Bev's turn. Am I in vicinity of the slide? I'll say, I'll say, you are able to get to the slide, and I'll say, even if it's not the language of stone shape, it's cool. You see moonshine and um, a bear begin to disappear <laughs> into a tunnel as Lucanus goes, don't go in there, you're not allowed in there. Sorry, sir, I hate to disrespect you, but uh, desperate times. And I uh, hit, head on the slide, too. Sweet. Um, Bev, you jump down the slide behind... Um, Mima and Moonshine. Um, I'll say it took you a full dash to get there. So you guys, Moonshine, Mima, and um, Bev all plop down into the tunnel down here. You guys see that um, the Allcaster is here and vulnerable, and oh, no. it is not being guarded. In fact, you see that not only is Coixis gone, but some of his brass scales have been left behind. Like they've fallen off. Oh, this Ugh. is a bad scene. Um, that takes us back up to hard one. So I'm still running through through the so, university. So you and you and Balnor are running through the university. I'll say, um, I'm going to roll a D10, and you and Balnor are just gonna get rocks thrown at you by like random students and stuff that are there, <laughs> just like random commoners, like. <laughs> rioting as you try to run into the Great Hall. You guys are pretty close. If um, I get fucking taken out by a rock, I'm going to be really <laughs> sad. First Titan killed by a stone. Okay. A Titan um, fell so by a stone. So there are there are eight attacks coming at you. Hard one, you take 14 damage. Okay. Um, and uh, Balnor takes 16 damage. He looks a bit worse for wear. Uh, uh, what's up with these people, man? Um, you guys see the tail end of Beverly sliding down this stone slide. 
I'd Come recognize <laughs> I'd recognize that new thick ass anywhere. We gotta go follow that boy. You see, um, Balnor uh, j- joins you, starts running. I'm gonna say he'll use one of his action surges and um, does a full dash. He uses his new divine power, scoops you up and carries you further as you guys both rush towards it. Um, you guys hop down the slide. Moonshine and Bev, um, you guys see Hard One and Balnor collapse on top of you guys in this tunnel <laughs> near the carapace of Coixis and the Allcaster. Holy shit, Bev, can I see your amulet? Are, oh are yeah, we take out a gander. Of combat? Um, you guys aren't out of danger yet. Like, Lucatus okay. can still the get you guys The second I again. get a chance, I'm trying to dispel magic Great. on that Allcaster. Okay, yep. so that is, um, after Hard One's turn, that is going to be Moonshine's turn. All right, seventh level dispel magic on the Allcaster. Okay, Moonshine, here's what I'm going to tell you. Okay. You are doing essentially arcane surgery yeah, I assume on the much. Allcaster because yeah. the Allcaster also keeps the city afloat. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to need you so to I give me an arcana check tumor. to carve out the effect that is causing everyone okay. in the city to go crazy. I am going to, first off, I haven't used my reaction. Papa hasn't done anything. Can I use Papa to give me a help action on the arcana check? Yes. So I'm going to do this. If I fail this Arcana check, I'm going to counterspell myself if, oh I, if my I fuck up. Oh, my God. Wow. Awesome. I'm furiously washing my hands so I can be just like a nurse during this operation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone suit up. I'm doing surgery. Okay. So uh, this you, is- guys, you guys all um, gather around the Allcaster, these green um, gemstones sticking out of this arcane apparatus. Moonshine. If this is the it. case, I'm going to do a sixth level dispel magic and save my seventh level to be a counter spell of okay. myself. If I need. Um, Moonshine, go ahead and give me an arcana check to try to dispel the charm. 25. 25. Nice. Okay. Moonshine, you cast dispel magic, a targeted, precise dispel magic spell into the allcaster. And I um, smell I smell coffee in the air because I'm like I'm taking it's taking me back to the library where I did all my wizarding. I have some beans I'm just putting right under her nose. <laughs> He's doing that double coffee thing. <laughs> and um, the city does not stop levitating, so mm-hmm. you know you have successfully not done that. Okay. And you guys hear the sounds of people hitting the floor. Okay. So it sounds like like you heard like the distant rumbles of like a riot in the city, and right now you hear nothing. Um, and you see you see well, Mima me comes out. Mima comes out of her bear form, and she goes, oh, "I'm so sorry, baby. I'm so sorry." She don't she grabs worry you and, about it. I'll, I mean, I'll take the hug. It always feels good to be in my mom's <laughs> arms. But I I need to make sure that what I just cut out was the right thing. Are you okay? You're okay. I'm I'm all right, but I didn't have the spell cast on me. Okay, let's go. Uh, someone, someone, go up and check out Peepaw. I'll run up. Yeah, you guys go in and you see that Peepaw Luke is passed out. Um, so it looks like just from exhaustion, like whatever it was, just like overwhelmed them. He's out. Oh, okay. You guys, you guys look out one of these giant windows. You see that there were people like almost like zombie apocalypse style, like trying to like climb in the windows to get to you guys hanging in the windows trying to like climb up into the university um people passed out at the door you look out of the university doors into the city at large and you see that everyone that was under the effects of the spell has now passed out and you see over the horizon flying towards glade home and its vulnerable populace is Erdan atop a corrupted skeletal Coixis. Fuck. Is this the new, is this Pestilence now? And that's where we'll end our session. Oh, oh my God. 2. Wait, I know. can you tell me though, like everyone's passed out, but that doesn't mean I failed, right? No, you, I mean, they yeah. would have done, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're all just sleeping. It's fine. It's honestly yeah, I know. great. Everyone still in the city like, was very tired. When you save the day and that means that everyone falls to their knees and passes <laughs> out, you're scared that you didn't save the day. <laughs> Very scared. Yeah. yeah. No. Holy shit. Uh, what Great an, work. 
and we'll talk about this on the short res, but what a fucking interesting thing to now we have to go up against Quixis and Erdan. Yeah, you're just making us fight our friends. It really I hurts. know. Yeah. It's good. It's we good. We get it, man. I think you're good. You're <laughs> smart. You're you're a great storyteller. This is so also mean. so bad you're for bad me guy. because <laughs> I used a ninth level, an eighth level, and a sixth level spell. I yeah. now have one seventh level spell left, and then how poetic the rest was it one. that you got to counterspell Peepaw though? Yeah, that, that was great. Was great. Mm-hmm. Really good. <laughs> that uh, ruled. Sweet guys. Um, we'll talk about. Uh, more of this over on the Patreon. Patreon.com slash NADPOD. Uh, that's N-A-D-D-P-O-D. Don't sing yet. We, um, I, I actually finally learned the lesson. I didn't even try to sing. Oh, wow. Really wow. good. Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, guys. Uh, do we have anything to plug this week? I want to, I guess like we did this on the short rest, but I want to give a shout out to everyone who's uh, uh, still out there working in the hospitals and, and fighting yes, this. Yes. Yes. Thank you for, I mean, doing the real work. Doing Thank the real for, work. Yeah. The being true our, titans. Being our heroes. Yeah. The, true true, titans. the true titans of Earth and Bohemia. <laughs> uh, cool. So, yeah, we had some stuff sent to our P.O. box. Thank you all so, so much for sending us these treats. Yeah. Um, first of all, we got some nice notes from Brian C.H. Uh, David T. sent a lovely handwritten note on a nice, I want to say animal skin or a thicker burned canvas texture. Mm. Oh, boy. Very cool. Very legitimate. Um, and they also sent some custom dog tags for Paw Paw Cock on Jaw Jaw. Cute. Awesome. <laughs> All of our beloved animals. All three a part of the treasure, story. Yes. <laughs> um, I want to read out like what the dog tags say because it's very cute. Paw Paw says, if found, ask for legal advice. Oh. <laughs> Jaw Jaw says, I'm not lost, just slow. Oh, which is very sweet. That's great. And Kaka's, of course, uh, probably the most touching of all, says, I don't know a hard one. (laughs) (laughs) A gentle ribbing. Very nice. (laughs) Thank you, David T., for those. Um, We also got some hand-drawn merch ideas from Connor. Uh, One of their ideas was a weird thumbs up that says, Oppa hard one style. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. So uh, look for that uh, just as a shirt that I will be wearing personally. Um, oh, shout out to Landon and Lexi. Uh, they sent us uh, a save the date. Uh, congratulations on your upcoming nuptials, um, whenever those may be. Uh, wishing you the very best trying to get that all sorted yeah. out. Uh, Godspeed. Um, <laughs> oh, and Ben Gamble sent us a copy of his book, uh, Dragon Suck. Uh, it's about a peasant, uh, kind of a saucy peasant uh, who is tasked with uh, defeating an ancient dragon. Uh, it's kind of a sarcastic take on that genre. Uh, you can uh, find that online. Uh, I believe Amazon, it's available there, as well as other booksellers. Sweet. Um, and then, oh, most importantly, shout out to uh, Jamila, a.k.a. Aww. at Chococopta on Twitter, who made the entire first episode of our podcast into a comic. Oh, man, it's, it's so yeah. cool. so cool. It's yeah, we should leave that shout out to the fucking front of the episode. It's so yeah. good. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so good. Um, you can read it right now at uh, tapas.io slash series slash not another d d podcast, uh, the fan comic. Actually, not another DD podcast, the fan comic, or just Google uh, po- not another d d podcast, fan comic. I'm sure it'll we come. also shared it on, on our Instagram and oh, yeah. Twitter, uh, yeah. whatnot. So if you're trying to find an easier way to get to it, yeah, you can find it. I trust you guys. Yeah, yeah it's you know worth the way. Find. Uh, sweet guys. Uh, well, that's it for this week. We'll be back next week with another uh, episode. In the meantime, we got the short rest. Uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter, at chmurf is me, at Caldies Caldwell, at Axford is Emily, and at Jake Hurwitz is Jake. And you can tweet about the show using hashtag NADPOD. That's N A D D P O D. Let's give it a now shot. We are, we are, we are. Oh, great. The We are, we are. And now it is time to shout out our benevolent council of elders. We've got Brad D, Dylan B, Danny P, Steelbreaker, and Samuel B, members of Luna's Flying Wolf Pack. They all own dope matching bomber jackets. Unfortunately, the jackets got ripped to shreds the first time they transformed in them, but it looks super intimidating, honestly, so it was worth it. Beardman Dan, Adam R, Danielle the Dastardly Dame, Alucard, and the Unread in Undead. And also unread, just like Maverick, undead incinerator. Henchman who quit working for the pestilence because they thought his plan to infect the people of Gladehome was just a little too fucked up, even for a wraith. 
Halder Frostbeck, Jordan DJ, Jeffrey S, Cutter W, and Andrew M. Jawjaw's siblings, they're all very pow- proud of their big brother, who they affectionately call Speedy, because of how much faster he is than all of them. Ain't that cute? Schubert the Mushroom, Elena C, Michael McD, the head mixologist, Victor T, Balnor's boy, and Michael C, enchanted pots and pans who prepared the feast enjoyed by the band of boobs. Normally, the glittering lady just eats an entire raw sheep while watching TV. Yeah. So they were thrilled to get a chance to properly entertain again. Justin I, Jacob C, Elena M, Dana G, and Paul G, a crew of Gladehome disease specialists who declared that Erdan showed no residual signs of infections after banishing the sword. So when you think about it, everything is entirely their fault. Uh, Yeah, so uh, not Beverly's. Good. Glad we all cleared that up. Daniel R, Destin C, Jibe G, David T, and Aaron Sully, a murder of infected crows led by Caw Caw, currently attacking anyone with pronounced glutes impossible. Improbable. Quite unlikely. Sergio Salazar, Solomon Sacraes de Sesuani, Michael L, Trele the Crepe, and Jory S, four legendary parents of the realm who have mastered the art of achieving a full night's rest after only getting three hours of sleep in an easy chair. Balnor worships at their socked and sandaled feet. Adam H, Ryan, Angel B, and Christopher DR. The Butler Guild, which is most certainly going to fine Cordon Bleu for allowing himself to be called a butler and be treated so casually. Also, the pleats in his pants aren't to code. So after getting, especially especially not after getting drenched in the shower. So he's he's got hell to pay. Richard X Machina, Sam L, Troy Mixie, and Drew Nasty. A nest of unhatched baby dragon eggs which will come to know Moonshine as their uh, quote-unquote mother someday and will learn to coexist with the small folk. Let us let us pray. Josh S., Nicholas C., Austin C., Kristen P., and Axel A., Luna's anger management therapist. They actually don't work on getting rid of her anger, but instead uh, water and weed it so that it grows into the beautiful garden that it is. Mike H., Matthew E., Catherine S., and Shadow, a group of Green teens that got in trouble for swearing on Pelor they saw a flying werewolf. Turns out they actually weren't lying. TJM, the gnome barbarian, Trask the Traveler, Robert F., and Hunter R. Melf's surviving rattlers who hated seeing Mima turn on Moonshine but had to respect how convincing her shape change was. Zolo Dolo, Nick B, Burley T, Panama James, and I Am The Atlas, a group of wizards that hold the record for greatest number of successive counterspells on one spell. It's five, which is honestly a pretty easy record to beat. Watch your backs, everybody. People are going to be coming for you. Colton B, J, CC, Lulu, and Aiden RH, Egwene's Arrow manufacturers, that's right. They expressed concern when Egwene was loading up on arrows and carving Beverly's name into them, but nobody really had the uh, the mental fortitude to step in there. Timmy R., Blitzbrig Dimitri, J. Dragonborn, and Zach C., four of the townsfolk who threw rocks at Balnor and Hardwon, all of them hit. Congrats, guys. You brought me down to four fucking HP. Lucas B., Jordan L., Talith X., Mateo C., Casimir, the all-knowing Tonathan's Goliath monk friends who quickly scooped their sleeping buddy when everything went down in, Gl- in Gladehome. A clutch scoop indeed. Kaylee Elise, Barnes and Nader, Christian A, Jens Christian T, and Luke H, Cordon's fellow butlers, each one more subservient than the last. It is said that they can bow so deep they can pass through floors. Oh my goodness. Devin W, Chenoa B, Jared E, Persephone, and Eric McD, the EMTs who who nursed Cooter back to health with good berries after Balnor knocked him out. They shall henceforth be known as the Berry Boys, Berry Boys. Reese and S, Eric and N, and Andrea B, Jay Parker, Jonathan O, and Austin M R, Erdan's team of dermatologists who treated his boils so well that no one suspected anything was wrong until it was too late. Great work, everyone, but also you have doomed us all. Stephen C, Maxwell C, Mike K, Omri M, Calum L, Mima's snake babies, as is the custom of the crick, every polymorph results in dozens of eggs being hatched. These beautiful baby snakes are possibly the only good thing to come out of Mima's snake shift. 
Scott D., Mikonji, Dan, and the Red Rain, a crew of Crick elves who were so blacked out on Crick water that they couldn't function enough to attack the boobs. Good. We salute you, you heroes. Richard C., Karen T., Curtis S., Nathaniel P., and Nikki W., Jaw Jaws, hey, some more. Jaw Jaws, brothers and sisters, all equally adorable, all equally young Beverly's tortoise children. Andrew B., Christopher B., Nicholas P., Kevin M., Rahul N., Luna's Pack, just a bunch of swole wolves who love to hunt hard and party harder. Nothing beats hunting and getting tanks. Ow! Ow, ow, ow! Maribel, the kitty morphing gnome, Joe McGee, Meta Amps, Atticus C., Amy W., and Grace G., the team of therapists that it's going to ta- take to help Hard One get over the trauma of being attacked by his noble possum queen. We're going to need a breakthrough here, Docs. We really are. Eric G., Michelle O., Gage M., number one Beverlyn fan, Jen R., Feldonis, and Dave H., a group of teens who is one year older than Egwene, who actually she looks up to. Holy shit. Literally, the only people in the world that Egwene thinks are cool. Brittany B., Eric F., Redneck Ruff, Christian F., S., and Jack L., Whiskey Elementals. Oh my goodness, Whiskey Elementals. They're like water elementals except a golden brown color and way, 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 way sexier. YGREC32, Michael KM, Tingle the Bard, Kelvin Noodles, Esme M., and Colton K., some of Hugo's most prolific clients. They're actually confused why he hasn't been answering their calls or texts, but it is because he's dead. You guys, I hate to be the one to tell you, but he's dead, and he deserved it. So, sorry about that, but thank you all. That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs>